Breaking news story later tonight. Big news coming out at 9 p.m. from Rob Port at SayAnythingBlog.com. Be sure and check out his site tonight. Again, it's at 9 p.m. To me, it's a shocking story and one that I'm not happy to see there tonight and promote. Rob's going to join us live here tomorrow night on 630 Point of View to really break down the story for you. You can find out more tonight on Valley News Live 10 at 10. Now, lots to get to tonight. So our top story, let's get right to it. Fargo homeowners. Yes, you're going to get a cut in your property tax bill. Welcome to 630 Point of View. I'm Chris Berg. Thanks so much for joining us. Last night, a lot went down at the Fargo City Commission meeting, and we'll get to many of those elements, those items here in just a moment. And one of the best items, at least in my opinion, covered last night was a property tax cut of 2.25 mills. Essentially what that means to the average Joe like myself is that a $100,000 home is going to save roughly $10 a year on their property tax bill. People are celebrating this as obviously a huge, huge win because no one, or at least not many people can remember the last time there was a property tax cut for the average Joe in the city of Fargo. So I guess, you know, yes, we should be very happy about this. And I want to put some context into this tax cut for you tonight. The city of Fargo's budget for 2016, roughly $261 million. The tax cut or mill reduction I just mentioned will save the taxpayers roughly, you know, I'd say a million dollars or so over the course of every single year. So, yes, I'm glad taxes are going down. And again, to keep this in perspective, we're talking about a tax reduction of one half of one percent of the entire budget for the city of Fargo. So it's a start. Let's hope our leaders keep headed in the right direction. No pun intended. With us tonight, Fargo City Commissioner Dave Pepcorn. Great to have you here. Let's start with the biggest, most important news. What happened on Saturday in Montana? Just, that that just was kidding. tough. That was tough. But it's I'm only kidding. one game. Come on, man. I know. So let's talk about this meeting last night. You guys covered about a gazillion topics. One of the big ones is the property tax cut. Are you happy with where this tax cut ended up? Absolutely. And I would say, I would summarize it saying we all compromised a little bit. And Tony Gehrig's original number was 20%, and that was pretty aggressive. And, uh, but, but I think two and a, you know, 2.25, that's pretty good. That, his, his would have been a little over 8 mils, and so it's not quite what we were hoping for at the beginning. But I think, uh, and, and uh, Mayor Mahoney did a great job, and, and we all had, uh, we all had to give a little bit, but I will say the other, other thing is we're adding police officers uh, and doing a lot of things. We can do that. We can add spending in some areas and still get a tax cut. That's a good thing. So where specifically did you compromise? Well, my compromise was I, I would have much rather been at about five mils. And so it isn't the, it isn't the cut that I would have hoped, and, and at, Tony obviously did too. And, and I think all the different departments, everybody, like we're reducing overtime, uh, reducing some spending as far as travel. And so as far as the city uh, overall, they, we all, all cut a little bit. So I would say compromise that way. And see, and that's what I, I, I assume that you'd say, Chris, I wanted to see more cuts. I want to play yeah. for you a clip. This is Mayor Mahoney. This is July 21st. Is that how these negotiations are going on? This is from the Need to Know Morning Show on AIM 11 on the flag. Here's what he said that you said, and I want to see if this is correct or not. Let's play this. Bill Byrne came to me and actually said that uh, you know if we had a two to three percent increase in the budget, he was okay with that. And get a one mil of you is okay with that. So I don't quite understand where he goes. Engineering has a lot of needs that they want and need. And they came to me as well, and that's his portfolio. And he came to me and said, Tim, we don't have enough money. So I'm not quite sure where they're coming from other than to lock on to an ideology and think that's the best way to go. Is that accurate? He said you came to him and said, hey, we need more money. No, that's not accurate. And, and to me, the, the target number is the, the cost of inflation. You know, so 2 or 3%, I, I do think that's what our number should be. But uh, back in the original thing, I, I definitely supported Tony with his, I'm, actually I made the seconding motion when he uh, first proposed the 20% reduction. Uh, that didn't pass. But, and so that's, that's part of the deal. I, you, you have to shoot for what you can, and, and I think it was good. I think it turned out, I'm happy with it. So just so I'm hearing your accuracy, hey Chris, we could have probably cut it 5 mil but also yep. if we would increase it 2 to 3%, anywhere in that range, I was okay with. Right, and, and there are extenuating circumstances. I, I totally support adding police officers because uh, we obviously have some issues with being a growing town, and, and so you have to be realistic, and so I'm happy.
There's a lot of things I want to get through. You're talking about police officers. So where are we at now with the new search for a police chief? The, next week, our, our search committee will get together and basically we'll go through the whole list. There will be some people that would be eliminated just because they don't meet the basic qualifications. But uh, I believe next week, then we'll start going through and, and reducing the list to probably five or six candidates. Wow. Yep. And when do you plan on uh, announcing who, it is, who well, it's going to be? I'm, I'm sure it'll be at the end of next week. But basically, uh, this is... The end of next week, you're going to announce who the final choice is? Or when's well, the final choice going to well, make the uh, happen? No, the final choice will be, uh, I think, after next week, we'll, we will uh, kind of whittle it down to five or six candidates and then invite them in for uh, per in-person interviews. At least that's, the, that's what I believe will happen. And then, what, like October, we have an announcement? Yep, or? Yeah, okay. I, yep. One of the other big stories coming out is now the city's going to be taken over to manage uh, the Fargo Dome. They're getting rid of, the, I think it was Global Spectrum, yep. if I may. Yep. But essentially so that you guys can go, okay, we're going to now manage this, plus we're going to renovate or demolish and redo the Civic Center. Right. Your thoughts on what's going on there? Well, I'll, I'll do kind of a quick history. Back when it first started, we, we needed an outside management company to help drive acts to come to Fargo. Well, now uh, it's an established venue. It's very successful. And Rob Soblick has a lot of good contacts. And so basically the whole reliance to get uh, events here, we can do that. And, and, and then when you combine that with the, the potential of the Civic Center being able to manage both places, uh, it, I believe that's going to be a, a good combination. And we are going to keep global, global spectrum for the food and food and beverage service and so I do think it's good to have a relationship but but I think the other thing is to keep the money local uh, we we would send the management company a lot of money and and not all of it would come back to Fargo and so now so now that all that money will stay in Fargo so that's a good thing they're talking Civic Center fifty four million dollars roughly is that a good price tag for a entertainment it's, venue in town that's a lot of money but but one of the things that we'll look at I, I don't anticipate that a lot of city money will be used at all uh, we'll we're hoping that a lot of private donors will step forward also naming rights and so there's a lot of potential things and that's a, that's kind of the next step we'll have to work with our we have a committee and so there's there's a lot of next steps and that's one of them this obviously is gonna I'm assuming gonna be a big meeting for you tomorrow of being appointed now to the land part of the diversion authority we've got the major top military officer, Lieutenant General Thomas Bostick from the uh, Army Corps of Engineers in Fargo tomorrow. Talk about the FM diversion. I'm assuming it's future. Is he showing up with, hey, funding's coming? Or what's going to happen in this meeting tomorrow with him? I hope so. I, we're, well, I'll check right away to see if he has a checkbook in his back <laughs> pocket. And, and obviously the senators are going to be there, the governor. And so uh, it'll be interesting to see what, what their proposal is and, and what the financing. Because to me, that's the cost. And in, in, our, in our number, that's, that's a key thing. Well, I'm sure you're getting some kind of, you know, uh, here's, what, here's the outline of tomorrow's meeting. So what do you expect to come out of tomorrow's meeting with him? I, I, I honestly, I don't know. Really? I, what, what I'm hoping is, I'm hoping that there's some kind of financial commitment, but I didn't see that on the agenda. So that's, <laughs> like I said, the first, when I shake his hand, I'm going to reach and you see <laughs> exactly. if he's got a, got hey, a checkbook. you got an open check there, yep. uh, buys and beat Weber State. Oh, yeah. And I think Carson Wentz will also play, too. I, I hope so. I think so. All right, good. Dave, always hey, good to have you here, man. Thanks Appreciate for having me, Chris. Very much. Stay with us.